Okay, I've got two data sets here. The number of goals per game for a season. You can see one in column C, one in column D. And my question is, are these data sets the same? And what would you do to answer that question? Well, you might look down the data. You might stop a few times and say, well, broadly speaking, they seem to have the same type of numbers in. That might be a first step. And then you might say, okay, I'm going to do an average. I'm going to do a mean average calculation. Let's go ahead and do that. So average, then I'm using the cursors here, control shift and down and enter. And I can see 2.63 and then shift and right uh, on the cursor and then control R and 2.76. You can see the averages are pretty close. So should that lead us to conclude that these data sets are similar? Hmm. We're gonna explore that question in the next 10 minutes or so. But if we're meeting for the first time, I'm Chris Mortimer, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. And if you like analyzing football data like this, you're going to love our Excel VBA for football traders community, a completely unique resource. We've got a library of videos in there. We've got a member forum. You get access to me as well. So make sure you go and check out Excel VBA for football traders. There's 1.5 hours of free content to get you started. So with that said, let's get into this task, which is a beginner data analysis task. I've got a little, a little analysis area set up here. So we're going to work through these measures and we're going to focus critically on so what. So let's interpret this. You know, what do these measures actually mean in the context of what we're doing? So firstly, when we're doing beginner data analysis in Excel, let's go ahead and count the number of entries to do that. I'll use the count a formula. I've typed it in there. I'm going to navigate over using the cursors, the arrow keys, control shift and down allows me to uh, select that data set. I can hit enter. And then I'm just going to hold down the shift key and right arrow and control R allows me to take that across. I'm just going to hit the F2 key to check we're referring to the right data ranges, which we are. So we can see the number of entries is the same in the two data sets. So what? That's not particularly important, that one, but that's the number of games uh, in a season, I believe, in the Premier League. Let me know in the comments if that's right or wrong. So maybe more interestingly, we want the minimum and maximum values in this data. This is an important initial step when we're doing data analysis. Let's use the min formula to do it. So min, once again, control shift and down arrow. So good practice at formula building as well. When we're doing this exercise, we can see the minimum value is zero. That's what we'd expect if we're looking at gold distribution. Control R, and we've got the same here. And once again, I'm just going to hit the F2 key to check those references are accurate. So no massive discoveries yet. So let's go for the max formula. This is going to give us the maximum value in the range. Once again, using the arrows, control shift down. And then is this going to give us something different? Control R. And then, yeah, it's looking a little bit different there. So we've got a maximum value in season two of 12. So this is perhaps our first clue that these data sets might be quite different. Hmm. Let's keep going. So we want the range. And to get the range, we just sub subtract from the maximum, the minimum. Once again, take that across. And it's kind of um, intuitive, isn't it, in this situation? But in other data analysis, it might not be so easy. So you want to make sure that you find the range. So let's move on now. We're going to move on to what stat statisticians would call measures of central tendency. So broadly speaking, where's the midpoint in this data? Now, the mean is what the average formula in Excel gives us. But the truth is, I think average is a bit average. That mean average to me is not the most informative average. In fact, it can be a little bit deceptive, it can give us the wrong impression. So let me show you what, what I mean. Using the average formula, control shift down once again, and we can see we've got a mean here of 2.62 for the first data set, and then control R, we've got 2.76. So the same as these values uh, we've got up here. I'm just gonna select these cells using the shift key, Alt H9, Alt H9, Alt H9 a few times is going to reduce the number of decimal places there, making the data more readable. So we've got this measure of central tendency. Once again, just looking at that, we might say, well, they look about the same, these data sets. So Chris, you're holding me in suspense. Are these actually the same? 
Well, for me, a more insightful measure is to use what we call the median. The median average. What's the median average? Well, the median is going to line up all the entries in the data set and then give us the value of the middle entry. We'll talk more about the, the, the significance of that in just a second. So here we've got median. And I'm going to navigate over once again, control shift and down and then control R. So this is giving us the midpoint. Now, this is slightly different, isn't it? So the midpoint for season one is three, and the midpoint for season two is two. Mm. So we're be beginning to build up a picture here. Let's take the time now to understand the significance of the mean versus the median average. Now, I've got a very small data set here, and this is admittedly a contrived example, but it illustrates the point you need to know. You need to know your football data analysis. For example, during the COVID times, can you remember, there were some crazy games where uh, football teams had to put out like their youth teams in order to fulfill a, a fixture and, and they lost like 25-0. That's an example of what we'd call an outlier, an outlier. It's a piece of data that's right at the end of the data set that probably we want to discount. And that's what I've created in this data set here. You can just hit the F9 key or you can go to formulas and then calculate over here. That's going to make the random numbers regenerate. And we're analyzing this data set. We've got the mean and the median here. Can you see how different these values are? If I hit the F9 key, it's like 100% difference, 50% difference. So mean and median give us a very different impression of what's going on. A median gives us a more accurate impression. That's because the mean is going to average all the values. That means it's disproportionately affected by outlier values, by outlier values. And as I said, recently in football data, we've had a few of those outlier values that we want to ignore. That's why you should always include the median as well as the mean, because the median just lines up the values. It doesn't matter if there's any outlier values. It's going to give us a more accurate impression of what's going on. Let's carry on. So the mode, the mode gives us the most frequently occurring value in the data set. Once again, control shift down. Is this going to give us some insights? Anything interesting here? Mm. Once again, we're building up a picture. This isn't exactly what we'd expect. So for season two, we've got the most commonly occurring value is zero. Season one, it's three. So we're literally building up a picture, figuratively, building up a picture in our minds of what this data set might look like. Season two, we're going to have a big peak at the beginning of the data because zero is the most commonly occurring value. You wouldn't know that, would you, just from looking at the data? So we've got our three measures of central tendency, all of which give us different insights. And I recommend the median as the most useful. Let's move on to the second part of any beginner data analysis, which is a measure of what we call dispersion dispersion. How dispersed or how spread out is the data? And to get that, we use a measure called standard deviation. So I recommend this, this STDEV formula here. Quickly, how is standard deviation arrived? 10 second explanation. They take all of the values in the data set, find the difference between the value and the mean, and then average all those differences. Then they do a statistical adjustment that we don't need to worry about, they average the differences. So it's the averages of the differences from the mean, the standard deviation. Supremely insightful measure of dispersion, got to be included in any data analysis. So control shift down. Will this give us some more insights? So 1.82 for season one, and then moving across control off for season two, we've got 3.03. .03. So we can see the measure of dispersion it's twice, it's twice the size for the season two data. So we're beginning to build up a picture. So suddenly we've gone from thinking, yeah, the mean average is about the same. These must be similar to really building up a picture of what the differences might be in this data set. And we can go through and we can say about the same. And we can say different here. So are there outlier values that were affecting the mean? Uh, the, the, the median you know, might give us insight on. The mode is most commonly occurring value. Occurring value. So lots of lots of zeros in season two. And the standard deviation suggests season two data much more spread out. 
more spread out. So once again, maybe more outlier values at the top there. So we've got our measures and we've done some interpretation. Statisticians don't do this very often, but what does it actually mean in the context of what you're doing? So make sure you go ahead and do that interpretation. But to complete this picture, we need literally a picture of the data. We've been building things up. How can we visualize this data and fully tell the story of what's going on? Now to do this, I recommend you use my number one formula in beginner data analysis in Excel, which is the count if formula. We want to count the number of times 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is appearing in data set 1, and then the values from 0 to 12 are appearing in data set 2. So we're benefiting from having figured out the range right at the beginning. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say uh, season 1. In fact, let's go over here. Let's say number of goals first. As always, you can download the download file. Work along with me. Let's say season 1 here and season two. Now, number one, number of goals, what range do we want? Well, it's got to be between zero and 12. So zero, then I'm just going to say this cell equals this cell plus one. And then holding down the shift key, down arrow, and then control D, that takes us down to 12. That's as far as we need to go. So we've got all the number of goals written out there. Now we can use the counted formula. It's so useful when we're dealing with what we call discrete data. Here we're dealing with whole numbers, that's what we call discrete data. Numbers with decimals and stuff, that would be continuous data. There we need the frequency formula. The frequency formula would help us there. OK, so equals count if. What's the range here? So I'm just going to go Control shift down uh, Then I'm going to hit the F4 key. And in this case, uh, what kind of reference do we want? Well, in this case, we want to fix the row, but we don't want to fix the column because we're going to take this formula across. So I believe this is what we want. With count if, we give the range first. We say to Excel, look at these cells in this range. And then the criteria, we're saying to Excel, this is the cell that we want you to count. So how many times does zero appear in this data set? I think they're the references uh, that we want, uh, those partial absolute references, uh, but we'll see. So the formula's in. Control D. So how could we check that this formula has worked and that it's accurate? Go down to the bottom of the Windows PC. Alt and plus is gonna is a nice shortcut to sum up the values above. And we can see 360, 360. So we benefited from doing that very simplistic measure at the beginning of the number of values in the data set. I can see they're all being counted here. Control B. Right, let's pull these across. Have I got these references right? I'm not absolutely sure. Control R. We do have 360 there, so I can prove that Alt and Plus. So we've got all of the values accounted for in the data set. I'm just going to hit the F2 key. Yeah, and I do appear to have got those formally right. I don't want to go too far into the explanation of the dollar signs in these formally, but you can see elsewhere on the channel, we explain the difference between absolute partial and partial absolute references. And this is season two, of course. So I've missed that out. Good. So once again, we're building up a picture and we can see. As we kind of alluded to, there might be more outline values here in season two. So what we want now is a visualization. The, the key to getting a visualization or a chart in Excel is to get the data set up properly first. That's what we've done with Countif. We can now select the data. And I'm going to go to Insert. And what kind of chart do we want? Well, a nice column chart should do the job for us here. How have we done? Well, Excel's given us given us a series that we don't want. So I'm just going to click on these blue uh, blue columns and then hit delete. And we can see this is our first um, season. I'm going to go to select data. So, it, yeah, it's the data in column Q. I'm just going to edit this series, then the season name. I'm going to click in there, season one. So rather than having series one at the bottom, it says season one, which is nice and informative. So suddenly we've got a nice profile, a nice visualization, really telling the full story of this data. But we need to do one more thing, which is to get each visualization side by side. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add a series here, series values. So this time we're going to go for column R, control shift down. And then enter here and then series name. This is going to be season two here. Now we should be able to hit OK. We've got season one and season two. And we can see 
we're now telling the full story of the data. And we can see these data sets are really quite different, but we wouldn't have known that just from looking at the average. The, av the mean average is a very average measure. It doesn't tell us that much really. So I really recommend at the beginner level for data analysis, adding these measures to your data analysis toolkit, particularly when you're, when you're analyzing goal distributions of football data. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to check out our Excel VBA for football traders community, a totally unique set of resources, a video library in there with over 40 hours of content, new content being added regularly. We've got a member forum. You get access to me. If you're interested in football data or would just like a set of structured tasks to work through Excel, Excel VBA, you'll love our Excel VBA for football traders community. If not, it's not a problem with me at all. I'll see you in the next video right here on YouTube. Take care.